Hello, this is going to be a quick video tutorial for my students. This semester I'm teaching a WordPress class and teaching the students how to install WordPress. The first assignment involves installing WordPress on your local home computer and then installing WordPress on a web host or web server. So to start with, I have the students install WordPress on their home computer. Now, in order to do this, they need to download WordPress so they need to go to wordpress.org and download WordPress and save WordPress to their desktop or downloads folder. Next, they're going to need to install an Apache web server, a MySQL server, and PHP into the web server. Now you can do this individually by installing all of those programs separately, or you can install a program that installs all three in a bundle. Now there's a few choices to do this. The one that I'm going to use in this video is WAMP Server. This is the website, wampserver.com forward slash en forward slash. Another choice that is popular right now is MAMP and MAMP Pro. What's nice about MAMP is that they have a version for Mac OS X. So if you're an Apple user, they have a version that you could install quite easily on your Apple computer. Another choice of web server, MySQL server, and PHP bundle installer is XAMPP, and that's also been around for a very long time. I've used XAMPP before. Uh, my personal preference right now is I like to use WAMP server, so I'm going to install this. So for WAMP server, I'm going to go to the download page, and I'm going to download the 64-bit version. When you go to download it, you're given a warning that you may need to install a package from Visual Studio 2012 first. And I'll click on this link here. So before installing WAMP Server, you might want to install the Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio update. Um, this package or these libraries you need to install first. So download it and run the installer. And then when you're done, you can go back and install WAMP Server. You can download it directly right here. And I've downloaded it to my desktop already. I'll show you on my desktop. There's the WAMP Server installer. There is the C++ redistributable libraries here. I've already installed this, so all I need to do now is install WAMP Server. Also, here is my WordPress downloaded in a zip file. So I'll run the WAMP Server installer. I'll just accept the default settings. And click Install. The install will take a while, so I'll leave the recording and come back once the installation's finished. At this point in the installation process, it asks me to please choose my default browser. If you're not sure, just click open. You can see that it's highlighted explorer.exe, and this is fine. I'll just accept the default and click open. Now the installation will finish. I'll accept these default settings, press next, and finish, and WAMP server will open. WAMP Server opens and runs in your system tray. You can see it here, it's the green W. The W starts off at red when all the server services are shut down, and then goes to orange, and then if all services are online and running, it will turn green. So that's what you want to see, is a green W here. That means that the Apache web server and the MySQL server started up and bound to the correct ports, and now your system is running those servers. To shut WAMP server down, you click on the green W, stop all services, I like to do that, notice it turns red, and then I right click on it and choose exit, and it's shut down. To launch it again, I'll go to my start menu, and I can start it here from my start menu, or I can look through my programs, go to WAMP server, and click Start WAMP Server. Once again, there it is starting up in the system tray. It turns green, and now WAMP Server is running. If we click on it, you'll see that we have an Apache web server. 
I can start and stop the server here. I can stop the service, start it, restart it. I can test port 80. If I install the service, then I install it so that it runs on boot up. I typically don't like to do that because I only like to run a server when I need it. I don't want it starting and running in the background if I don't need it. So also, WAMP server has the MySQL server. You have a MySQL console. You have the configuration file, the log. And once again, if you highlight service, you can stop it, start it, restart it. And you can also install or remove the service so that it runs on boot. PHP tells you the PHP settings, the configuration file for PHP, the version, there's an error log, etc. Not only that, does it install Apache web server, MySQL server, and PHP into the web server, it also gives you access to PHP MyAdmin. PHP MyAdmin is an excellent browser-based interface allowing you to create databases in the MySQL server as well as users, uh, queries, all kinds of things. So PHP MyAdmin is very useful for having a graphical browser-based interface into your MySQL server and to create databases. You can launch PHP MyAdmin by simply clicking on PHP MyAdmin from the WAMP server utility in the system tray. Also, you can go to the WW directory where you'll be placing all of your web files, all of your websites that you'll be creating, go in the WWW directory. So if I click on it here, it'll open it up in Windows Explorer. Notice that this WWW directory exists in another directory called WAMP, which is on my C drive. So to get to this WWW directory, you just go to your C drive, go into WAMP, go into www, and there are some default pages already in there. There's a home page, index.php, a MySQL test page, testmysql.php, and a favicon icon for WAMP server. To take a look at our web server in action, what you can do is, is once again, highlight the utility in the system tray and select localhost. This will open up a web browser and put localhost into the URL. And if you see this, that means WAMP server is installed and running correctly. It gives you the WAMP server logo and a little information about the server configuration. Another thing that I'd like to mention is if you want other computers on your local network to be able to reach your web server, in other words, from another computer, I could put in the IP address of this laptop that I'm working from, and they would be able to open up a web browser, put in my IP address, and see my web pages. If you would like to make your web server publicly available, you click on the WAMP server icon and click Put Online. This should make your web server visible to other computers in the network. And that's nice. So one thing I'm gonna do right now is, I'm gonna go into my www directory and I'm going to delete the index.php file because I don't need a home page for my local web server. And I can leave this test mysql.php file and I'll leave the favicon. Now, if I go back to the web browser, type in localhost and hit refresh, all I'll see is the index of the web server and the two files located in there. To install WordPress, all I need to do is copy the WordPress zipped folder into my www directory and extract it. I'll do an extract all. So now I've extracted WordPress into this folder. Let's take a look inside of it. If I click on it, you'll see inside there's another folder named WordPress, and inside this folder are the actual files needed to create a WordPress website. This is the WordPress website framework, essentially. What I wanna do is go up one folder and copy this WordPress folder, or cut it, I'll do a Control X to cut it, and paste it directly into this www folder. All right, there it is. So now inside this folder, there's nothing there. I can now delete this folder. And now I just have a folder named WordPress and inside are all the files. 
I can change the name of this folder. I'll change the name to site one for website one. So this will be the location of my first website that I'm going to create with WordPress on my local computer. Now before I can do this, I'm also going to need to create a database. In other words, if I open up a browser, and once again I've gone to localhost here, here's localhost, I'll refresh it, there's site one. If I click on site one, you'll see that it prompts me to begin the WordPress installation process. First it asks me the language, English, United States, that's fine, I'll click continue. And now it says, before we get started, we need the database name, the database user's name, the database user's password, the database host location, and a table prefix. So if we have that information, then we can begin the installation process. We don't currently have that information, but we can create a database and a database user and create a password and everything really quickly using WAMP server by clicking on WAMP server and going to PHP my admin. In PHP my admin, I'll click on databases and I'll create a database site one DB for site one database and I'll click create. All right, the database has been created. Now I'll click on users and take a look at what users there are. In WAMP server, my SQL server is installed by default with only a root user with the password set to blank. If we want to create a user, we can do that. We can just click add user and I'll add the username. I'll say admin, for instance, host, I'll choose local, password, I'll choose my pass, or you could choose a more complex password if you want. I'll retype, well, I'll just put in password here. Password, and I'll retype password. Obviously, if this was a real scenario, I wouldn't be using such a simple password as password. And, or you could generate a password here, a very complex password, but this is fine. If I want, I can create a database for the user with the same name as the user right here by clicking this checkbox. I don't need that because I already have a database that I've created. I can also grant global privileges to this user. I'll check all and click go. So I've added a new user. The user is located here, admin, localhost, yes, all privileges. What I want to do though is I want to add that user to the database. So I'll click on databases. I'll select the Site1DB database. Click on privileges and you can see that admin has all privileges to this database, the Site1DB. So by clicking on the database and then clicking on privileges, I can see that yes, admin has all privileges to this database. So this should work now. I'll go back to home. And I think we're ready now to install WordPress. I'll click back on the WordPress page and click let's go. I can now put in the database name, which is site1db, the username, which I created, which is admin, the password, which is the password password, the database host is localhost, and I can accept the default table prefix of WP underscore. I'll click submit, and you can see that it looks like it connected to the database if you see this screen. I'll now click run the install. And now I get to configure some specific information for this website that I'm creating. In other words, what will be the name of the website that I'm creating? I'll say Dan's website. 
I need to create a user, an administrative user for this specific website. This is a different user than the database user that you put in previously. This is not the MySQL database user account. This is the administrative user for this new website that you're creating. So I can make up a name. I could say admin underscore Dan, or I could say Dan underscore admin. That sounds good. I can accept this complex default password or put in my own password. I'll put in the password password, which is also very weak, not something you would use on an actual web server, but that'll be fine for right now for this video. I'll confirm the use of this weak password, put in my email address here so I can get confirmation every time there's an update to my system, etc. For right now, I'll just put nim at nim dot nim. In other words, nothing, nothing, nothing and I can discourage search engines from indexing this site. Sure, I'll just check mark that for now, fine. This is just a test site anyway. And install WordPress. Okay, WordPress has been installed. The username is Dan underscore admin. The password is my chosen password. And I can now log in. I'll click log in and it'll take me to the login page for my website. Notice the login page is localhost, the name of the folder where my site is located, which is site one, and then the admin login is wp-admin or wp-login.php. If I want to reach this page, let's try wp-admin. So just go here, site one, forward slash wp-admin and you can see it takes us to the same page. I'll put in the username, admin underscore Dan, the password, which is password, and log in. Looks like I've put in the wrong password here. Um, how about Dan underscore admin, and the password, password, and log in. Ah, there we go. So I've logged in and I have a new WordPress installation that I can play with, that I can hack at, that I can install themes, and it's running completely here on my local computer using WAMP server, Apache MySQL PHP, and PHP MyAdmin right here from my local computer. If I want to take a look at the front page of my website and leave this administrative section, I just click on Dan's website, visit site, and that's the front end of the website. Notice localhost forward slash site one. And that's what the website looks like with a default installation. If I want to if I want to configure my site and edit my site, I go to localhost site one WP admin and return to the administrative portal or back end where you create posts, create pages, add plugins, create users, change your settings, and basically configure and add content to your website.